morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another video. I'm Skippy. Well, part one of the build for the Dumas Hawk Hurricane, going to be focusing on the wing and possibly the stabilizer and rudder um, on the side as we go through. Um, one of the top tips that I've uh, discovered is different to the Grillo's plans, the Dumas plans don't have um, a complete set or silhouette of all the parts that are already cut. I'll show a picture. So on my ME109, the Grillo's, if you break a piece, you can use the plans as a template, photocopy it, cut it out, etc., which I think I've shown you in my previous videos. On the Dumas kit, you don't have that. So what I've done is I've actually photocopied or scanned uh, the 90 pieces um, whilst they're still within the main sheets of wood so that should I break one, then at least I've got a template to use. So that is probably, a, a, probably my first top tip of this video, um, and I'll show you the pictures there. These are the photocopies of the parts that I talked about earlier. Um, these are all the ribs. I've only done the one piece or one copy because actually it's just a duplicate so I can photocopy that if I need to make more than one uh, and those two halves equal the full length here. I had to do it diagonally across because of the length of that piece but there you go you can see the other components on that one and this piece again did it in two halves um, so when you slide it down you can see that that's the top end and that's the bottom end. So should I need it, I've got a template that I can use and keep copying if I need to. Just as a refresh, if you haven't watched the introduction, um, when I do the wing, I'm going to add the A-rons onto it. Um, I'm not going to do them to the scale position because um, I've found with other models, if you do scale size, they don't quite work as effectively on these smaller kits. Also, it makes it a little bit harder to build. So my plan is to use extended A-rons between um, the ribs of the wing just to make it a little bit easier to construct. I'll show you there on the plan that's how I'm planning on doing it. Uh, and then with the stabilizer and rudder, I'm not sure. I, normally I just use a solid piece of wood as an outline. This time for the actual movable parts, I might build it up just to see if I can make it lighter. Again, until I start doing that, I don't know how much of a faff that'll be, but I uh, might give it a go. So yeah, top tips then straight away, photocopy the components or the cutout parts. Um, so that you've got spare or so that you can make spare should you need them. So building the wing, I'm going to do it as per the instructions shown here on the screen. Um, I'm not going to video myself building it, but uh, every time I complete a part, I'll perhaps add a photo in just to show where we are. Um, and then if there's anything that I discover as I go, maybe do a little bit of a video clip on that. But hopefully um, we'll now get building the wing. So we have all the wing components cut out. To be honest, it didn't take that long. And the quality is very good, very easy to keep clean as well. Uh, the other thing I like about this compared to the Grillo's, obviously the ribs have got cutouts in, um, which will make them lighter, but also it means that when I run the wire through from the servos, rather than cutting a groove into the rib ribs themselves, I can actually wire it through the hole that it's going to make. So that all went nice and neat, no issues there, so now I can get on with putting it together. These are the cuttings and off cuts, um, having cut out the wing parts. I'm going to hang on to them, I always do, just in case I need any spare bits of balsa. You never know when they might be useful. Um, so yeah, don't throw your wood away until you're finished with it properly. Before you start building, it's useful just to get everything uh, where you need it. So I've decanted all the small bits of string and bits of wood into an old Grillo's box. It's the advantage of Grillo's, at least they had two separate halves unlike the uh, Dumas, which is a one complete box. So I've got all those sorted out. Before I start the weighing, I've selected the component parts of wood, measured them out, made sure they're the right ones. And then with the ribs, put them all neatly in the plastic box there so I don't move or lose them or drop them or even break them. Okay, those are the starter of the wings uh, cut out. I'm gonna build the center section first using offcuts of the leading edge um, to act as the blocks, which are shown here. Um, another tip that I often try and use is I label the parts once I've cut them uh, for each side of the wing, so port and starboard. And also because you want the wings to be um, the same, I often match the two up, so the two leading edges together, make sure they're the same length, same with the trailing edges, etc. Uh, just to make sure that everything's going to be nice and symmetrical when you build it all together. So unlike the instructions, I'm going to start with the centre section, then I'll move on to each wing. Okay, we have the centre section built up. The only bits that I've not glued are the ends here. So where the bars or the bits are going to lead in from the main wing, 
I glue them when I glue the wing together as I do the incidents. It just gives a little bit of added strength. Also, that's why I've not um, cut them flush. Just gives a little bit more surface area to glue to. So that's the centre section done. So I'll let that dry firmly, remove that, and I'll start on the starboard wing. So you can see that we're building the starboard wing here. Um, as I talked about on the plans are all in the introduction and I've shown on the plans already, I'm looking at doing the ailerons between these ribs here. Um, so I've glued the main ones except for these two. So just remove that and that one. What I'm now going to do is trim them down uh, along where the stringers go and then glue them in place and then using the cutoffs and then making another rib section there, I'll then create the aileron. So I'll have to trim this piece out as well. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to put the stringers along the top just to give it a little bit more rigidity. Uh, and then hopefully that'll be nice and firm whilst I do the ailerons. Okay, so the starboard aileron is complete. I'll show the pictures. Obviously, I cut out the trailing edge, added it in a piece of sheet uh, to give it more support and also somewhere for the um, hinge to glue into. Created the aileron with another piece of sheet, the ends of the original ribs, another piece of sheet on there, and then also sanded it down to give it some movement, some curve, so that when it's flush with the wing, it actually rotates nicely uh, enough that once it's all put together there'll be enough movement up and down and hopefully enough to control the aircraft um, and I just need to finish off the, uh, the leading edge smooth all the parts down uh, and then I'll look to make the port wing and I'll do it exactly the same way okay port wing section completed as I said I built it the same as I built the starboard I'll just show a few pictures. Uh, what I've also done whilst building it is I've paired the, the port and starboard up, both ailerons and wings, just to make sure they're as symmetrical as possible. Um, I've started sanding down the leading edge as well of the wings. I find it easy to do them when they're in sections rather than the whole wing because it's quite long. I don't want to break it. I've done it before and I break the stringers. Looks like I've broken a stringer here, so I'll have to repair that. Um, that was probably the cat I noticed they got in earlier. Um, so it's all matched up and I need to decide what incidents I'm going to do for the wing. Uh, whether I do it, as it states here, 2 inches or 2 degrees, or whether I do the 1 degree. Um, I'll put one side on it and then have a look and then make the decision from there. So rather than the 2 inches as per the plan, I've reduced it down to 1.5, which when you look across gives it a more flat appearance on the upper surface, uh, which is a little bit more scare-like but also still gives it a fair bit of uh, dihedral within the wing, which hopefully will add to the stability. Obviously with the ailerons, um, that will help. It's a little bit untidy here, but obviously I'll sand that down so that it butts into it nicer and neater all the way across. Um, so I'll glue that and then see how it looks and then get onto the port wing. I often find it annoying when I'm trying to measure wing tips, for instance, that um, the ruler that I have has the inches on one side and not the other, so it's more difficult to actually see how you're going to measure it. Uh, so my top tip there is if I just put a piece of tape across, one and a half inches, I can see straight across now, so now I can hold it up against this side. And obviously I'll, I'll do it in a second when I'm not holding the camera. I can then see that it measures much more closely. I need to hold the wing down, it's lifted up a little bit. Um, but that's how I'm doing it, a bit of tape, top tip. Okay, well after much sanding, probably a good hour, I've finally finished the leading edge, the wing sections. Pretty pleased with them to be honest. Not looking too bad when you go cross profile either. Nice and smooth. Now what I've used to do these, I've used my leading edge sand block. Got a groove into it a long time ago, a bit of sandpaper and then you can just rub it in a little bit easier. Um, took most of the square edges off using the file 
sanding block and then I smoothed it down using the three different grades of um, sandpaper block there and balloon and all I think that's come out quite nicely also gone over the rest of the wing surfaces um, to tidy those up um, obviously when I was building it the wing didn't go perfectly together I undercut some pieces underneath so what I've done I've added in extra sections just to give it a little bit of extra strength where it joins also done the gusset as put in the plan uh, and I've also added in an extra block here where the wings join the center section just to give it some added strength because obviously this aeroplane or this model is going to have a lot more weight than it is originally designed for um, but all being well it will be strong enough so that's the wing section completed and um, the next will be to fit the servos probably going to put them in these sections here um, but it's later in the evening so I'm going to look at doing that tomorrow but all in all good start Okay, moving on to installing the servos for the ailerons. I'm going to be using the ones from the Flight Test Power Pack F. Those are the specs there, and they, those of them are laid out. Obviously, what you want to do before you install them into the wing is make sure that they're going to be uh, the correct way round and work like ailerons. So I've wired it up to the battery, the SC and the receiver. And if I action the aileron, they are both rotating different ways which means that will work with the ones. so that's good obviously once it's in the airplane I may need to reverse it but for now the main check is to make sure that when they're both facing down and their wires are facing the same way that they move opposite directions because that'd be really annoying once they're glued into the wing to then have to change them okay before mounting the servos in the wing because um, once they're in they're stuck in I've already tested them uh, made sure that the arms are going to be the right way when they're positioned in the wing and then they move alternately which is what you want the other ones to do uh, this time on this model I'm keeping the mount a lot more straightforward and literally I've glued the servo onto a base plate which will fit within the wing on the rib um, in the past all of it really extra done is added a piece of bolster along the side don't think it actually makes any difference that's pretty firm now super glued on and also if I did need to remove the servo at any date I can just cut that balsa wood off send it down to the plastic um, on this kind of airplane the chances of being able to remove the servo without breaking the wing highly unlikely so you might as well glue it in uh, and that's what I'm going to do okay wing construction is complete servos have been mounted uh, note I did actually add another piece there just to give it some more rigidity uh, same on the port side I've marked up the centre on the wing where the uh, ailerons will fit, just stretching over. They will fit nicely in the wing there. And when I've got the uh, material in for the hinge, that will pivot. I won't do that until I've covered it. Same with the port one. Again, all fits nice and neat. So the only changes I've made to the wing really, apart from the ailerons, is I've done a one and a half inch dihedral rather than the two that it shows on the plan one and a half gives it a little bit more of a flat appearance but doesn't lose some of that lift that it will need um, so just makes it a little bit better uh, I'm quite pleased with how I've managed to get the leading edge this time using the various grades of uh, sand block so that's the wing completed um, and moving on to the next stage Okay, so building the rudder and stabiliser. Previously I talked about perhaps having this as a solid piece and this built on the frame, and the same here, solid and frame. But actually thinking about it, what I'm going to try and do is build the frame as it is, but build it in two sections. So rather than having that there, what I'll do is build it but cut it, have the string there, and have another string attached to the other side. So hopefully... That reduces or keeps the weight down and then I'll try the same on the rudder so I'll be doing it as per the instructions except I'll be adding an extra piece here and building these in two parts um, as I've done with the other bits so that I don't mess the plan up too much I've photocopied it uh, and I'll build over these just in case um, and also if I do change my mind I can always use these then as templates uh, for the solid bits of wood so I'm going to give that a go and uh, we'll see where it goes
Okay, so how I'm building the stabilizer, and this is how I'll do the rest of it and the rudder, is I've um, laminated the parts that came pre-cut already, um, and I decided, as you can see here, to build the actual um, moving part first. I'll then shorten this piece here so that I can fit another piece of this strip balsa on that edge. Um, so I'll end up shortening this, and then this is just thick enough. And when you look at it, that's just thick enough that I'll be able to run a hinge through it in these two places. Um, and then, all being well, that'll be strong enough um, for movement. What I'll probably do is where the control horn is going to go, I'll do an infill in there so that the control horn's got more bolster to go into. Um, but then that should help with the weight, uh, etc. So I won't do another video for this piece now unless something crops up. I'll just take some pictures as I go. Okay, this is the completed stabiliser uh, additions that I've made from the photos. These cross braces here just to try and add some extra strength and rigidity to stop it flexing. Also because this is going to be experiencing a little bit more load because uh, it will be powered. I figured I just wanted to make it a little bit stronger um, just in case. Um, added in the gussets as per the plan. I've also added in the sheet balsa here. That's where the control horn will be fixed to. Uh, I've sanded off all the edges. Um, just to give them a little bit more of a curve on them. A good way of checking that you're getting an even curve is where the laser cut black marks where it's trying to have an even stripe down the centre. Um, which you can see if it focuses, yeah. So that's all nicely finished. So I'm going to build um, the rudder in exactly the same way. Well, there we have it, the end of part one of the Dumas Hawker Hurricane build. We've built the stabiliser uh, and given that moving parts. We've built the rudder, again moving parts, and you've seen how I've done that on the plans. Built the main wing, added in ailerons and added the servos. Also, we've reduced the wing dihedral to one and a half inches rather than two to bring it into a little bit more scale-like position. Um, and hopefully, through the video, with the photos, in the videos, um, it all makes sense. Uh, if there's anything you're not quite sure of, feel free to comment in the bottom. If you're happy with the video and it's helped you, please give it a thumbs up. As I said at the beginning, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It doesn't cost anything and the more people subscribe, the better it is for me, the more motivated I get. And again, I've already gained even more subscribers since the last introduction video. So thank you very much to everybody for watching. Um, next video, part two, will be the construction of the fuselage. That's probably going to take me a little bit longer because there's more to think about uh, and it's going to be a little bit more fiddly, I would imagine got some ideas already but that'll come uh, in part two thanks for watching and see you in the next video